Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Yesterday we covered the Gemma 3 27 billion parameter model on the channel and we saw after testing it thoroughly that it was one of the best multimodal multilingual model out there at the moment. In this video we are going to check out this Gemma 3 1 billion instruction tune model locally and we will see how it performs on various tests. Before that, let's have a quick look at this model. So this 1 billion parameter model is a part of Gemma family of lightweight open models that range from 1 to 27 billion parameters. This model has 1 billion parameter as you can tell from its name and a token context size of 32k which is an exception to the standard 128k token for other variants in this family. The model does not have a vision encoder which is available in 4 billion, 12 billion and 27 billion models. The Gemma 3 1 billion model was pre-trained on 2 trillion tokens with a mix of text and images and increased multilingual data. The model uses the same tokenizer as Gemini 2, a sentence piece tokenizer with 262k entries. The model is available in various quantization formats including int4, per block int4 and switched fp8. I will also be doing another video where I will be showing you a quantized version in a new way. In terms of memory footprint, the model requires 2 GB, 0.5 GB and 0.7 GB and 1 GB um, memory for weights and 2.9 GB and 1.9 GB with KV caching. The model was trained on TPU with 512 chips, 16 data sequences and 2 replicas. Additionally, the model has undergone instruction tuning and improved knowledge distillation and reinforcement learning objectives. So let's try to get it installed and we will see how it works. Let me also give a huge shout out to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you are looking to rent a GPU on very very affordable prices, you will find the link to their website in videos description plus i'm also going to give you a 50 percent discount coupon this is my vm ubuntu and this is my gpu card nvidia rtx a6000 with 48 gb of vram so this is my coda environment which is being created and by the way given the size you can easily run it on edge devices or on cpu and i will also be showing you the real-time vram consumption so let's wait for all the prerequisites to get installed. And now let me log into the Hugging Face because it's a gated model. So you would need to go to huggingface.co, grab your reach token from there. And you would also need to accept the terms and condition at the model card, which is all free. You don't have to pay anything. So don't worry. And you can see that I am logged in. Let me launch my Jupyter notebook and then we will download and play with this model. And while it launches it, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws of agents with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. Okay, now let's download the model. And the model is being downloaded. It's just a small 2K model, which is quite cool. And the model is downloaded. Let's check out its inference. So I'm just giving it a prompt and then I am using a prompt template. And from there I am piping it, which includes tokenizer to encode the input, model to generate the output and then tokenizer to decode it back and we are printing it out. So let's run it. Now, if you run the inference here, you are going to get this error. And this code has been provided by the Google here on the Hugging Face repo. The problem with this code is that it doesn't load the tokenizer. I think the reason is because it's a very new model and we have just git cloned the branch of uh, the transformers library and the pipe doesn't maybe support the tokenizer. So the solution here is to use um, the tokenizer separately too. So what I mean is that instead of loading it like this, so I'm just going to replace this code. Don't worry, it is not going to download the model again. So this is a model and we are just loading its tokenizer separately. So I'm just going to run it. It is just going to load my model on the CUDA device, which is done. So now 
when we do the prompting it is going to reply so i'll just replace this one with sorry let me paste it properly i'm just going to format it a bit so that it will be easier to understand there you go so rest of it is um, same as before we are just asking it what breathing exercise should i do to reduce stress and then we are getting the assistance reply so now when i run it it should return me the answer and i have also increased the max new token to 550 let's wait for it to come back and there, there you go it has given us the response so let's check it out so reply is quite i would say in detail and it is talking about let's talk about a fantastic breathing exercise that can really help reduce stress it's called diaphragmatic breathing also known as belly breathing it's incredibly simple to do so which is good find a comfortable position inhale deeply exhale slowly repeat that is good so it has given us a very very fine exercise <clears throat> and then it is telling us why it works for stress reduction and then try making it a habit good stuff so very very spot on very grounded answer very pragmatic okay next up i'm going to ask it a cultural question so i'm asking it what does ahorita mean in mexican spanish slang when used as a response to a request is it right now or later if you are uh, uh, from that culture you know that it is uh, quite confusing at times and now in this one it is saying that you are right to ask ahorita in mexican spanish slang is a bit more nuanced than just right now it's generally understood as now or right this instant it's a very common and informal response often used to indicate you are busy or you don't want to commit to specific time so i believe uh, pretty well pretty good answer but if you want to add more if you know more about it please um, feel free to put it in the comments okay let's check out another one so in this one i'm asking it in indian english what does it mean when someone replies i'll do the needful are they being specific or vague let's also check the vram consumption so just touch over 8 gig of vram it is consuming i would say that it is a bit higher than i was expecting but anyway i don't think so this is going to be running on your cpu so maybe a commodity gpu you would need for it but the quality of model is quite good there you go so it is talking about what it means i'll do the need for it's a polite and incredibly versatile phrase that's true and then this is where it gets interesting it's generally a bit vague but it's often used with a level of understanding and a willingness to help here is a breakdown so it is breaking it down i'm also observing some touches of uh, reasoning error that it has really done some reinforcement learning and then this is going on and on so uh, you know i think very very quality answer again okay let's try out a math one so I'm just asking it to that given a prime number p greater than 3 show why p square is minus 1 is always div divisible by 24 explain clearly let's see how, how it reasons with the maths and there you go so it has given us the reply it is understanding the problem and then it is taking some key insights it is checking different points and then this is a conclusion and the answer is spot on as you can see it hasn't completed it but let me actually show you the completed one because i can already tell it is on the right direction so you just go here and then rerun it but the way it has reasoned with it it's very very impressive so it has printed the response again so it is going in the right direction as i said earlier and then there you go so yes that is correct and then it is also carrying on the chat because it's a chat model instruction tuned one so it is asking what i want to do next but look look at the explanation this is the prime factorization of 24 is 2 finally since it is very very well defined so this is you know how you can use ai to learn anything this is such a hard question to understand but it has done wonderfully well let's try out a coding one so I'm asking it, how can you reliably detect and handle a deadlock between threads in a multi-threaded Python program? Provide a concise code snippet demonstrating your method. 
let's see it should be fun and there you go so let's check out the program so it, it is understanding what that lock is and then it is talking about detection methods and then it is applying the threading package very well so it is going with worker simulating the lock and that lock this is the main function and then it is sort of creating the race condition here well done so it is a lock data worker thread and then it is talking about how the detection of deadlocks work important considerations and then further enhancements spot on so look coding language and then this whole um, language nuances and cultural nuances with math is sublime i would say with, and remember the size of the model is just 1 billion yes it takes a lot of vram for its size but the quality is very good okay next up i'm checking the multilinguality of this model so i'm asking it to translate the following sentences into 25 different languages listed below sentences life is short dream big and then there are 25 languages across the globe from europe to africa from asia to southeast asia africa south america wherever that is so let's see what it responds and also if there is any language which you always uh, wonder that i don't cover it's not that um, i don't want to if you just put it in the comments and i'm happy to cover it in the um, model in subsequent videos okay so let's wait for it to come back and of course i would also need your help in uh, verifying the response of the model so there you go so remember the sentences i'll go up life is short dream big there you go so look spanish let me also put them in the google translate okay so as per google translate and this is not definite spanish is close but not entirely correct even the french is close german is okay chinese looks good japanese looks good russian arabic no hindi is okay uh, but could be better i guess portuguese good italian no korean turkish korean korean is no turkish dutch swedish looks okay to me as per google translate by the way greek polish ukrainian nope indonesian maybe okay hebrew no finnish no norwegian okay czech no hungarian no thai yes and swahili is also not correct so all in all not bad i would say for just a 1 billion model but let me know what do you think about this translation because i would heavily rely on your prompt okay next up let's see if model can resolve real world problems so the prompt here is that every evening while i am washing dishes my neighbor's incredibly attractive yoga instructor who recently broke up with her fifth boyfriend this year purposely practices her yoga routine by the window in provocatively tight outfits giving me a smile every time we make eye contact I have already washed each dish twice and now I am washing my plastic spoons individually. How can I handle this situation without developing dishpan hands? The model is thinking. Let's see what model comes up with. And there you go. Let's check out the model's response. So it is saying, okay, this is really tricky and uncomfortable situation. And it's completely valid to feel frustrated and annoyed. Well, I was not feeling annoyed, but anyway. And then it is telling me some immediate strategies. Gray rocking. Okay, what that is. It means becoming an uninterested and unresponsive as possible. Well, I'm not a saint, so that is not going to work. Then second one is shift your focus. This is crucial when they are around actively. Shift your attention to do something else. Look out the window, read a book, to do a quick chore physical distance okay and then it is talking about uh, don't react emotionally to communication proceed with caution and then addressing the underlying issue this is where it gets a bit more strategic okay subtle observation protecting your sanity and well-being limit exposure <laughs> and then it is also telling me i'm an i'm an ai chat chatbot not a mental health professional if you're feeling distressed or overwhelmed by the situation please reach out for professional help so oh wow what the heck is this well i think this is just taking too far uh, so i think this is 
I think model just overreacted here. Anyway, so but model is asking me for their questions. So not bad, but I think model just overreacted a touch more. And I think model seems more annoyed than me. I mean, I was not annoyed at all. I don't think so. This uh, prompt gives any vibe of annoyance. But, you know, if you look at the subtle sentences that I already watched each dish twice. So this is not annoyance. This is like more. Anyway, so you know what I mean. But look, I believe other than that, model looks really cool for this size. Well, let me know what do you think. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you for watching.